Hi everyone, Andy at Trade Skills for you, and I'm here with Steve again. In this video, we're going to be putting some conduit in between two bits of equipment that maybe don't line up. Uh, Steve, can you show us how we're going to do that? Yes, what I've done here, um, I've pre-drilled this trunk in here, which is slightly offset from the piece that we're going to join, facilitate connection of. Okay. So just to show you, if I put this just through there, you can see that it is some distance away yeah. from the one below. And you can't, you can't, you wouldn't just fasten that together. We wouldn't be able to, Andrew, because the threads won't always go on straight. They're never at an angle. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is do a small set here. So we'll come straight here, yeah. a slight bend in, and then straight down to the piece there. Okay. okay. Um, to facilitate them, that then what I will do, because this is a very small bend, we tend to do this one by eye rather than to any set formulas, okay? okay. Larger sets, we can actually use a slightly different method. This one I'm going to do by eye for you. An instance of where this, you may need to do this, is where you've got um, a, a consumer unit with the manufactured holes, um, which generally are probably about 15 to 20 mils out as opposed to the five mil that you've oh, got. right, okay, so they box. don't line up, yeah. That's right, okay. So what we're going to do first of all is, I tend to put the set in the middle, right. and then I will cut it down to size. Uh -huh. If I thread it first, what I would actually end up with, because of the nature of the bending of the vise, I will end up with a very long piece here before it bends down and goes down. Okay, so you thread point. it later so then. So if I get a piece, you know, a good four or five inches beyond either end, mm -hmm. something like that. I will be able to put the set in, gauge, and have a shorter piece here. I can thread, and also, um, when I come to install, it'll only be a short piece there. Right. Okay. okay. Yep. So with this time, we're actually going to use the former okay. and the uh, lever arm to actually bend the piece of metal. Okay, so just to re go over some of the pieces again, we've got what's called a stop. Okay, so that when we bring the arm up and I put the piece in there, it enables me to put pressure on the tube to bend around the former and the stops obviously stops the piece moving. And just point out to everybody that you've got your safety boots and you've got your gloves on, which is I've essential PPE. Yep. Thing is about this, Andy, it is so easy to what I say, over bend this. If you've got minor over or under bends, you can put a bit more in and sometimes you can take a little bit out, but only a small tolerance on this, okay? And it's best to under bend rather than over bend. Okay. Okay. So don't go too mad straight away. <laughs> don't go mad. This is only a, a short distance between there and there. And I'm gauging, like I said, I'm doing this by eye. We're only talking about, ooh, from centre to centre, about 30 mil okay. on that. Okay. So, putting the piece in the work. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, it's just going to bend it. Now, you could put all your force straight down on this. Right. What you could do is this piece at the same time. And once you've got it started, yeah it's easy to bend. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bend in it. Okay. That's all I'm doing, Andrew. Right. Nothing more than that. We only want a little kick. Okay. okay. Move the piece. Just so as you can see, Andrew, okay. there's the little kick. So if you've got the actual accessory there. Yeah. Okay, we want it to go inwards, Okay, yeah. because we're actually going into. So we come down, little kick, and then we're gonna bend it Bend it straight. back now. Okay. Now the thing I need to do is make this piece parallel with the new piece there. Right, how are you gonna do that then? Okay, <laughs> right, well here's the thing. When I put this now into the vise, sorry, into the bending machine, let's get the stop back up there. Things, can you see anything that may go wrong here? <laughs> Always. Always. Go on, no, you tell me. Okay, let's have a look. Now the thing is here, where does the stop go? What's the issue here? 
Well, what you can see then, if I bend this with that up there to put a little bend in here, yeah. you'll take the bend out you've already put in. So, because you, you're too close to it? Because I'm too close to it. Right. Okay, so what I need to do is move the piece up so that the stop is, over is the just after the bend, oh. not over the bend. If you go over the bend as well, you, you can slightly again. take the bend out again. Okay. So we do it just after the bend. Right. Okay. Now the thing you need, need to consider as well is I'm going to bend it the other way now. And you want it to be lining up. And if this is up. slightly off center, it's going to be yeah. You'll get a divergent okay. kick. We need them all in the same line. You're so you need to have straight. that yeah. pointing straight up. Okay, again, it's done by eye, by eye for that. I'm just past the bend there. Past the bend? Yeah, as you can see. And then a bit of a... And all I'm going to do, it's best to see it from this end, actually. There we go, I'm roughly right. And again, just put a bit don't get mad. No. Oh, just a little pressure. Something like that. And what you can do then is just stand away from the piece and look at it to see how, how far out you are, you know? It looks like it needs to go down a bit more to me though. Just a tad more. Okay, as I say, it's so easy to... Okay, there we go. Okay. So we're gonna see now how good that is. Well, Always bring now. the arm down, yeah, don't yeah. leave it hanging up. <laughs> Okay, Andy, so I'm now going to offer this up to see whether or not that's parallel with that. There are a couple of methods we can do that. You can put it on the table and just measure the gap from the edge of the table to the tube to see that it's running true and not running out or inwards. Uh -huh. Personally, when I'm on site, I tend to just put it against the surface and see if it's parallel by eye because the set is only small. It's only a small set. Okay, yeah. now that looks roughly right, actually. And if I just bring it up right, to the piece... If it wasn't right, you could just get it back in the machine? Yeah, no, I'm quite happy with that. So it just has to come out a slight bit. And there's just the same gap all the way down, which is what we want. OK, now then... Sorry, could you make that... If, if it didn't fit, would you put it back in? Right, what do I do? Because you need only small adjustments. Yeah. Whenever you do this, I tend to do this by actually using just my body weight and not using the actual lever yes. because you can put too much. too much. And if you don't put this on the right place of the bend, you're actually in with a, a bow in it and there's your bend there. Yeah, yeah. If you don't get it in the right place, you get a ripple effect. So you, so you need right to now. get it onto the... Again, it's just experience really, isn't it? Yeah, I've, you know, even for experienced people who put tube in, if they've not done it for a little while, Usually it takes half a day to get your eye in, and after that you just you just run with it, yeah. And what you would do is one on the bend there and one slide there, and you just feel it just, a yeah. little bit of pressure just to move it either, either one way. way or the other. Okay. And you Good. do it similar, just to take bits out. That's how we do that. Now then, like I've said, we want a shorter piece here. Now there's going to be a coupling there. And we're going to thread onto it, similar to what we've done here, okay? But we have to be mindful of something here, and that is this bend here. So if I just put this, let's move the stop down there. Let's put the piece in there. Okay, I'm just gonna do this just to show you issues. That's nice there. However, I can't really thread that there. One. As I'm threading it up, you're going to bang against the vice. Interfere with the actual legs of the actual oh, vice. Of course, okay. Okay. So what you would actually do is give yourself plenty to work with. Plenty of space, really. But you don't go too long by the same token, okay? Yeah. And you could put it on there, but then you're working at an, you're angle, working at an to angle to the piece, so that's not good practice. So bring it through, so it's nice. Bring it through, so it's straight. Okay, now then, we want to shorten this possibly so we don't have a long length here, but you can't shorten it too much. The issue is, yes, only this part, the top, cuts. Mm -hmm. You've got this guide here. 
Now, if you cut it there, oh yeah, that'd be great for the thread, but the trouble is, okay. the guide then starts- Takes you to the bend. To interfere with the actual bend. Okay. So you've got to be mindful of that when you're cutting this down. Right. So what I'm going to do is, allow for, say, a couple of centimetres moving that forward. So from the bend back, if you wanted to, come back two, three centimetres, just allowing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. And just put a mark on it, so would you? So that keeps this to the minimum. So approximately there. Oh, so, yeah. so I will cut it there. Okay. And I can cut it there. Right. Okay. That then will be threaded there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'll proceed to do. I'll cut it there and then thread that's it. Right. Okay. Okay, so Andy, it's been cut. I've threaded the end now okay. and put the coupling on. Right. So it's going to fit just up there, but we need to address where this is going to be fixed. Now, you will also notice I've actually put a saddle on there, okay. just underneath where the bend will be. Just to support it, yeah? It will support it, and actually it does stop a bit of the twist on it okay. as well. So, I'm going to put there, but we need to mark where this is going to go. Okay, so all I'm going to do is come down here. I'm going to mark where it's roughly flush with it. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is allow approximately about 15 millimeters back, cut it, because when I thread it, um, so I've got to allow for the, sorry, I've got to allow for the coupling and for the bush to go in. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just show a coupling there, for example. Oops. So there's the coupling going there. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to cut it approximately halfway. Right. So if I do it there for you, that's where I'm going to cut it. Okay, okay. so that's what I propose to do next. Those eagle eyed amongst you will notice something <laughs> that um, yeah. the print is on the forward face. It is good practice, Andy, actually, that when you do this... Put the print in at the back. The print at the back. Okay. Fair okay. Yeah. So when it's finished. That looks fantastic, Steve. Well, good job. Okay, thank you. The tube is in alignment vertically. You'll notice there's no movement. I can't move it. Always ensure that the bushes are tight. Yeah. Uh, the saddle's in place in this case, and again, tight. You'll also note there is no exposed thread. No, that's good, isn't it? Okay, um, which is what we're always striving for. Yeah. If you did happen to have some exposed thread, you should always protect it with some form of galvanised spray or something of that ilk to brush on or spray on. Or just make sure you don't cut too much in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and we've shown in previous videos how to thread the conduit and to insert the, the, the bushes there, so just check that out. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.